All right. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Back with the pointer. Okay, so this is um, one of the smaller subfamilies. And um, it's interesting because Kojin earlier was talking about the diapterines and we saw some exaggerated structures on some of the beetles. Um, some had horns and projections and those were mostly associated with uh, fungus. And I don't know why they fight, but whether they would fight, but they would protect something. There's something of value, I guess, that's hard to get. And you'll see similar exaggerated structures in the Fernet Bataille that are really fantastic. So well, they have a worldwide distribution, the subfamily. They live and feed in rotten wood, and they're also found uh, in leaf litter. And uh, it's a very cool group and understudied. So if uh, you know someone who'd like to you know, give us um, help with uh, phylogenetic study, for example, or descriptions of mutaxa. That would be awesome. Uh, three tribes are included, 28 valid genera, about 150 or so species that are described. And there's one uh, Astora from New Zealand that's in Sardisidus, so it's within the family, but we don't know where it uh, sits right now. So the antennae here are club usually, and there's a sub antennal groove. So between the eye and the mouth parts, there's a groove uh, that's where the antenna sits. That's pretty distinctive. And they often have, as I said, exaggerated structures on the head and pronotum. The abdominal intersegmental membranes are visible between uh, the dendrites um, three and four and four and five. However, this is one of the rare groups where the defensive glands are absent. Usually the membranes are there when defense glands are present, but um, this is an exception. The ovipositor, which can be seen here, <laughs> there's no, almost nothing to it. It's greatly reduced, so not very useful in classification, unfortunately. And um, you see this milky whitish coloration here. And uh, this is a rare group of beetles and insects, as, uh, um, as a matter of fact, that has particular calcium mineralization. So they have um, crystals of calcium within the cuticle, which gives this particular color, which is uh, pretty rare. And the flight wings are usually present. Here, uh, so on the left here, is uh, South African species, as we described recently. In the middle, this is an undescribed genus, and um, it was interesting when Kojin mentioned the symmetry of these exaggerated structures, and he was mentioning that um, some species of platydema, I think, uh, have asymmetrical structures, and how they would use those is kind of interesting. Well, there's a new genus here in the Freitata time that has a sort of a hook. Um, labrum here, or uh, be the clippius, and it is completely asymmetrical, and it, the beetle itself is flattened, so you can see that maybe you know they would meet upside down and push each other uh, by hooking their clippius like this. It's pretty interesting, and uh, we don't know much about their biology, unfortunately. There aren't many. Um, Phylogenetic analyses that have included them. At the bottom here, you have Kurgot et al. from 2014, and there were only three species of Prenup at that time um, included in this super big phylogeny. And they were said to be monophyletic, so they were three from the same genus. And Athora here was. Um, came close to them, and so that's why they're called in Cetus, but uh, how morphologically these uh, characters are uniting this uh, genus with the rest is uncertain. And uh, Kojun's uh, phylogeny that he's been showing includes Phrenopathes, which is um, in one of the tribes, Phrenopathini, and Archaeoglenes, which is in another tribe, and the other genera are in a third tribe, the third tribe of Phrenopathini that we'll talk about. So the relationships are sort of uncertain here. 
And uh, it would be great because this is a small sort of family to have someone look at the more taxa and really work out the um, relationships with them, the subfamily as a whole. That would be awesome. Uh, recently, I described some pupae because I mentioned the defensive glands are absent and the female ovipositor is basically nothing, like uh, the eggs just come out with nothing extending or nothing sclerotized. So I started to look at the different kinds of systems that we could use to classify these beetles. And these are four of the examples of the front of that time that uh, we described the larvae for. And the first one, as you can see, sometimes the, uh, they don't have the proper um, gen traps. So it's very lightly sclerotized and you wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to crush or pinch um, little arthropods coming through. And uh, the apex is quite unique here in this particular uh, species of mullion. And you can see that um, some of the structures that are exaggerated, like the uh, dorsal extension of mandibles in this group are starting to show in the pupae. And uh, this is penita. And as you can see, there's a single spine-like structure sticking out on the abdominal, uh, the side of the abdomen. Here you have a fork uh, structure and you can see there are setose like um, structures, spines along the um, posterior edge or margin of the tergites. And you can see here the fork um, processes as well and more spines here along the margin of the pronotum. And based on these structures, a uh, few structures in the pupae that we could uh, look at, uh, the results suggest that the tribal classification as we have it now needs to be reassessed. So then really fit um, you know, the pattern that we would expect. First tribe is a small one and had uh, up until recently just a single genus, Archaeoglenes, which is uh, distributed in most of the world. Here, this is the, the genera, the valid genera, and their distribution in the seven um, realms that I discussed earlier. And there are four species of uh, Archaeoglenes, though, in North America, as defined uh, by Busquet et al., which is uh, north of uh, Colombia. And they are small beetles. They have uh, often reduced number of antenomeres and tarsomeres, so not the 554 formula that we're used to. Uh, the mesococcal cavities are um, closed laterally by the meso and metaventrite, and the mesotrochanthin is not visible. So one of those characters, uh, sets of characters that we talked about today. And the prothorax here underneath on the ventral side has antel cavities. I mentioned that uh, in front of that time, there's a groove below the eye where the antenna sits usually, but this is extended into the pronotum as well uh, for this particular tribe. And uh, these are some of the recent contributions to this group, including um, Derek, um, Yvon, and Ross, and Shafalar and myself, and um, Marchand has been involved with this research as well. So on the right here is a map that I gathered from um, this paper here by Ion and Kaminsky in 2015. And this is one of the species that was described at the time, triple horny, which is uh, here, I think it's from Lord Howe Island or somewhere close. And uh, this is a lateral view of this um, species. And as you can see, they often have ridges and uh, nice, um, Carina on the pronotum and some structures here, pits as well, and this paper and the other paper by some of the same authors um, proposed or, or uh, published some of the 3D scans, the CT scans, including internal structures. So it's a really cool uh, set of studies to go and look at. This one is from uh, a new species in 2020. So this is the world distribution of the 
group, the tribe, and uh, it's based uh, at first on the 2015 publication, and then I added the species as we described, uh, myself and Wolfgang Schadeller from South Africa, and uh, there was a new species here described, and um, also uh, from the Lord Howe Island. Uh, I don't, I forget where um, Triple Horny was published uh, from. And then uh, this is a new genus that was described just recently. And uh, yeah, just in one species. So that was the first tribe. And the second one is Prenatatini. It's um, a small tribe as well with only two genera. And they're both uh, neotropical. So this entire tribe is uh, from the neotropics. Uh, this is, remember, the regions that um, I showed earlier in the map of the seven biogeographic realms. And it includes two genera and 16 species. And for this uh, group, they have strongly projecting mandibles, as we'll see in the next slide. The first antennal segment is long, first um, antennomere. The mesococcal cavity is not closed laterally by the meso and metaventrite. And in fact, the mesococcal is exposed. So this was proposed as a good character by uh, Watt and uh, um, John Lawrence back in the 70s. And the prothorax um, does not have the um, antennal cavities, so not in the thorax, but yes, on the head. And the mod modifications on the head for intraspecific interactions. And as you will see, the next slide, this is Frenapathes. And they have these uh, long projections on the head, a single one in the middle, like the supraorbital projections as well of structures and super long mandibles and mouth parts. And the antennae are kind of strange as well for a thinibryonid. And they uh, usually have a row of spines on the other edge of the uh, protibia. And uh, it's for digging, I guess. And they live in dead and stuff that wood. And this is the larva, which is mostly cylindrical and no um, modification in the uh, last her guide here. And Delognatha, which is the other genus, has extensions on the uh, side of the head behind the eyes here, and some sort of a concave area here in front of the head and very large mandibles as well. And I think there's at least one new genus that uh, I know of that's a little bit different. And the largest um, tribe in this Subfamily, this Penitini with 23 genera worldwide, seven in North America, based on uh, Bousquet et al., with 16 species. And the mandibles are not strongly projecting, but they are in some, time, in some uh, species uh, modified, as you can see here, for a species of Molion uh, expanded uh, dorsally. The first antennal segment is short as compared to the Prenapatini, and the mesococcal cavities are not closed laterally by the meso and meso and and the mesoprocanthin is exposed in this group as well. And the prothorax, uh, they do not have the anterolateral lateral antennal cavities that um, the Archaeoglenini have. And they also have, as I mentioned, some projections or exaggerated structures. And in this case, Molion species, there's a projection in the middle of the head, a single one. And we know that um, they live in tunnels and dead wood and um, they interact like this. Uh, one will go upside down and the other one, uh, you know, the opposite uh, uh, direction. And they will clasp each other with these amazing mandibles and fight this way. I don't know. Um, so the, these occur mostly in South America, and it would be uh, awesome if we could uh, get some behavioral studies on them because uh, it looks really interesting. And uh, the um, larvae are long and cylindrical usually as well, and they have uh, backward-facing projections like this. But typically, this is a species of Zaidis that we have here in uh, Canada and the U.S. We have 
two species actually in Canada and the US, two genera. So Daedis is the one that uh, we saw the larva of in the previous slide, and they have a two segmented club. And Clamoris americana uh, has a three segmented club. Otherwise, they're small brown beetles that live uh, in the deadwood. And I've put the complete list of valid genera and the, the tribe and the number of species that are uh, in the region that we're covering in Busquet, out north of Colombia, and where um, the genera occur in the world. And Diodis is uh, broadly distributed. Basically, any small brown Fernetta sign that has a two, uh, two uh, segmented club is <laughs> classified right now in Diodis. They do look alike though throughout the world. And so this is a, a summary of their diversity and distribution. And some of the photographs of the taxa that are in the region in Central America mostly. So you've got the Peneta, as you can see the projections on the head, really fancy structures, not sure what they're used for, probably to push um, other um, individuals in the same species when they're upside down or not, I'm not sure. Another set of fancy um, horns here on the head. Um, you know, here the head of this Cleoleus is uh, modified, but also the anterior portion of the pronotum. And uh, here it's hard to see a little bit, but there's a transverse uh, sort of structure shelf that's uh, in the middle between the eyes on the head. And uh, Again, the pernal time is slightly modified anteriorly. And so if um, it'd be really fantastic if someone could help us understand, you know, how these structures are used and uh, when and, and uh, you know, what kind of resources they're fighting over because um, all of these structures come out of a, um, with an evolutionary cost and um, why, you know, the, 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 these particular species evolve these structures and why were they maintained uh, over time, even though there's a cost to them, it would be really interesting to study. And on the right is um, the genus Zypetes, and it's found in uh, <clears throat> Central and South America, but also elsewhere in the world, and they're usually ovoid like this. And uh, they typically have this milky sort of uh, beige coloration. Uh, often this one is more sclerotized, but uh, quite uh, similar throughout the world, but lots of new species and really we don't know much about them either. So that, I believe, ends my presentation on Fernet Pines, and I would be more than happy to answer any questions if you haven't.